Welcome everyone to the University of Bristol uh, Premiere Pro video tutorials um, this is part two editing um, so this video will take you through basic editing in the timeline um, and uh, so in the rest of the Premiere Pro series there will be there's a, a more advanced editing video there'll be uh, titles effects sound and finishing or exporting um, so let's get going with uh, Premiere Pro 2 editing so in this session we have creating a sequence adding clips to a sequence cutting clips and the toolbar snapping and linking moving clips and deleting clips patching and the timeline so don't worry if you you've, some of these terms are new and you don't understand what they are obviously I'll go through them and uh, try and explain um, what they are and what they do so creating a sequence this is basically where we left off in the previous video um, we imported footage and we uh, we reviewed footage and we logged footage so the next thing to do really is starting the actual edit um, the first thing you need to do uh, to start editing is create a sequence so I pointed out the um, timeline window here before and this is where all the sequences are created so to create a sequence it's very simple uh, again there's a number of ways to do it um, but first I'm going to show you this one which is just going to file new and sequence so another way to do it might be down here in the project browser right click again in this window new item sequence uh, again there's a couple of ways and I think there's a shortcut as well yeah command N on a uh, on a Mac maybe control N on a PC so command N and I get this new sequence window so this is where it gets a little bit complicated for a, a, for, a, for a little bit mainly because um, I need to tell you about two things right now um, normally there would be only one way to set this up if we were just using the Sony cameras from the department um, but we will be using both Sony cameras and phone footage um, so it gets quite tricky when 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 you use the phone footage because they are can, there can be several different file types from different phones um, so I'll, I'll try and do my best to sort of cover the the widest possible scenario um, so when you're creating a sequence you have to think about two two things firstly that is the resolution and the frame rate so it's frames per second in the UK 25 frames per second is the standard frame rate and if you are shooting on the Sony's you could guarantee that everything that you get back will be 25 frames a second um, shooting on your camera phone you can't guarantee what your frame rate will be uh, you can look it up but it doesn't always come out exactly as it says in the um, in the in the settings on the phone as I've discovered um, so often the biggest uh, issue can be it will tell you that it's shooting at 30 frames a second when it really means it's the American standard which is actually 29.97 frames per second it gets complicated like I said um, the best thing you can do for now is just choose 25 frames a second choose a sequence with 25 frames a second um, you, you might run into issues when you when you're mixing when you potentially mixing Sony footage and camera footage and phone footage sorry um, 
because of mixed frame rates. Um, th there, there'll never be a problem in the actual timeline. Um, the, the, the timeline and Premiere will kind of deal with it quite well. The, the problems will come in, in the uh, sort of the, the look of the motion when you export it. Um, I'll, I can go through that in more detail later. Um, but for now, we want to choose a, a sequence that's 25 frames a second. The next thing we're going to do is choose the resolution. Uh, so a lot of people get resolution and quality mixed up. Um, you kind of hear people saying, you know, that, oh, that video is really good resolution um, when they really mean it's really good quality. Um, so resolution is simply the size of your video image in pixels. Um, often the, the, the sort of standard uh, rate that we work at nowadays is uh, HD, um, 1080 HD, that's 1080 pixels on the vertical axis. Um, and 1920 pixels on the horizontal axis. So it's 1080 by 1920, um, often just referred to as 1080. So that's 1080 HD. Uh, you'll also hear of 2K and 4K and 8K even, that, that's also K is 1000 pixels. Um, so yeah, that's also related to the, to the size of the, of the image. Um, so, like I said, standard currently is 1080, so that's the one we're going to go for. We're going to go for 1080 resolution, 25 frames a second. And the next thing, if you look at this little list here, you see all these names, ARRI, ABC Intra, ABC HD, etc, etc. All of these um, funny sort of abbreviations and, and, um, and what have you are all codecs. So a codec, um, codec stands for compression, decompression, um, and it's the it's basically your video file format. Um, the camera will shoot in a specific video file format, and ideally you want your sequence to match that file format. You can't always get it to match. Um, for example, I mean this is a quite a long list but it's by no means the exhaustive list. There are plenty more codecs than that um, and you probably find that your phone codec won't be on that list. Um, so in actual fact you probably want to try and choose a codec which is uh, as close to your phone codec as possible. As it happens, that codec is AVC HD. Um, that codec also happens to be the same one that you would choose if you were shooting on the Sony foot, uh, Sony cameras. So basically what I'm saying is uh, probably the best start you can get with your phones is choosing AVC HD, 1080p, 25 which again is also exactly the same one that you would choose if you were working with the Sony cameras so I can say for certain that this is the correct um, codec and settings to use for Sony footage depending on which phone you have it may or may not be the right one um, I, I'm gonna sort of stick my neck out and say this is probably the best one to choose um, in, in the situation where I'm, I'm not entirely sure exactly what codec uh, you, you'll be using. Um, if you find that you can uh, you can look up the codec that's in your phone and it appears in this list then by all means go for that one and even choose the correct resolution and, and frame rate as well that goes with it. But just be aware if you do end up mixing Sony footage with phone footage you're probably better off um, working to the Sony footage uh, correct codec than you are with the phone camera because obviously the Sony's going to require um, sort of uh, it's going to be better quality for starters so 
um, you know, you're better off playing to your strengths by um, by giving the Sony footage what it wants rather than the phone footage. Um, but anyway, that's um, that's a good start there. So let's go for AVC HD 1080p 25 frames a second, and we can rename our sequence. Uh, what should we call this? Assembly one. So um, it's kind of an editing term. Uh, assembly an assembly is just an assembly of the first assembly of your clips before you start getting into rough cuts and edits. Uh, you start off with an assembly. Um, so let's just OK that. Uh, when I OK that, you can see now that I've got. Um, a bit more detail down here in the timeline area and I have got a little icon and file in my project browser called assembly one and that is my sequence and I can even create a new bin called sequences and drop that in there so if I accidentally close my sequence, where's it gone? I can just go to this over here, go into my sequences folder, double click it, open it up, and there it is again. Okay, so that's how I create a sequence. So once you've created your sequence, you want to start adding clips into it um, so you can start editing them together so let's get into adding a clip into the sequence so like I previously said in the earlier video the first thing you want to do when you're previewing clips is open them up in the source window and to do that double click and away you go it opens up there I've, I've logged these clips now since the last time so I can double click these open them all up and view them there let's start off with this one uh, actually if you look down here where it says frame rate um, in the browser you get all these headings in the top which tell you various bits of metadata about your clips what settings they have in them etc and you'll notice that the frame rate like I mentioned before so my phone clip frame rate is 29.98 but my uh, Sony footage is all 25 frames a second. I could have I could have started with a, a frame rate that matched my phone clip, um, but in here I've only got one of those, and the rest is all Sony footage. So I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of go with the majority and go with 25 frames a second. If that was the other way around, then maybe you want to go with the um, the settings of the phone. If you've decided on a on sequence settings and you realize that they don't match uh, your clips you can actually go back up here to the sequence menu sequence settings it's interesting little point here like I said in the first video depending on which window you have selected will change these menus so I want to go into the sequence settings but I can't because it's grayed out and the reason is I have my browser window selected and not my timeline window so if I go to sequence now I can get into the sequence settings and if I want to change my frame rate I can change that to something else okay I'm not going to do that at the moment okay so what I want to do is get some of this clip into my timeline. Um, what I don't want to do is just throw the whole thing in and start editing it there. I want to start editing right from the from the start, basically, um, which means opening up my full clip in the source window and then selecting 
the part of it that I think I'm going to use first. Um, and that is the editing process underway, basically. Once I start selecting parts of the clip, then I'm editing. So there's a lot of movement in this clip. And perhaps I just want this bit where it starts moving down there, that little movement there. I'm going to take that. So how do I select that bit and put that in my timeline? So very easily, um, I want to create an in point just here and an out point about there. And the way I can do that is place my playhead where I want it and then I can mark in and then mark out later. If I hover over these, um, these markers, it tells me mark in is keyboard shortcut I and mark out is keyboard shortcut O. So I and O happen to be next to each other on the keyboard, which is really helpful. They also happen to be right above J, K and L. So I can play through my clip with the J, K and L keys. Another handy little tip with J, K and L, if I hold down K and then press L once and keep pressing it, I will scrub through my clip one frame at a time. And that's really useful when you start editing precisely or more precisely. So I'm going to start there. I'm going to press I for an in point. Then I'm going to play forward. I'm going to stop about there and press O. So um, at the moment, you're not going to know exactly which frames you're going to want to use, but that's fine for now. Just getting that part of the clip in is great. Uh, you'll do all your fine editing later. At the moment, we're just assembling some clips in order that we think we're going to use them. Um, we might not even use them in that order in the end. That's all fine. The whole point of this sort of digital non-linear editing is we can, we can do whatever we want, whenever we want. So let's just go for this. So now we've selected that part of the clip, I'm going to drop it into my timeline. And I have two ways of doing that with insert and with overwrite. Um, there are a couple more ways actually, but these two are the main ones right now. Um, so if you look again, insert is comma, overwrite is full stop. And these happen to be directly below the J, K and L keys. So it's really handy. Everything's all sort of right where I want it. Um, so once I've chosen my in point, my out point, I now need to select a, an area in my timeline where the clip is going to land. Now, obviously, at the very start of my edit, there's nothing else in here. Um, I've also got a timeline playhead here, which I can scrub by grabbing or clicking around, same way as uh, the other one. Um, that timeline playhead is going to default to being at the beginning of my timeline so that's a, a good enough place for me to drop my um, my clip in um, so this is what we call classic three point editing in point out point in point so I'm just going to insert at the moment insert or overwrite doesn't make any difference um, they both do the same thing at the moment I'll show you the difference later on so there you go. Dropped one clip in. Very small. I can't see much. I need to zoom into my timeline to see what's going on. And I do this by pressing the plus key. And I can zoom out again by pressing the minus key. So I can zoom in and out with plus and minus. Or I can use this little um, expander bar thing here down the bottom. Okay, so now I can I can be I can be ready to put in my next clip. Uh, I, I'm just going to put in things at random at the moment, um, or relatively random. So let's choose a bit of this in. 
out and insert okay so you'll notice something strange has happened um, sorry I pressed undo there command Z is undo um, let's I'll just go back to how it was so you'll notice uh, that my audio has come out on a different track I'll show you tell you why that's happened a little bit later on um, but for now I'm just going to carry on so what else another clip in out and comma for insert so I can go on like this again you know people who have edited with Premiere before uh, might be thinking why aren't I dragging clips around at the moment so there's there's another way to get clips in and out of timelines and that's by just dragging them around dragging them over very messy uh, not very precise and to be honest it takes longer um, and I, it, people ask me all the time why don't you just drag it in well you know what's quicker because I'm, I'm always gonna have to select the part of the clip that I want so I'm always gonna have to put an in point and an out point and once I've done that what's quicker than pressing one other key boom and then it's in the timeline so you can't tell me there's a quicker way to uh, to insert clips than that um, so now we've got a few clips in our timeline put one more in got a few clips in there now um, and I can show you the difference between insert and overwrite so if I decide that I now want to put a clip in in before some of these clips so perhaps here if I want to put a clip in here what do I do so I can which one do I choose do I choose insert or overwrite let's use this clip again so I can tell what's going on bit of in and out there and if I choose insert see if you can tell what's happened so if I click insert now you can see that the clip that I added dropped in on the uh, playhead at, at that point in the timeline and all the clips after it got pushed out of the way so all of those clips are still intact but they're just further up the timeline so that is what insert does it basically makes a gap for your clip and drops the clip in so overwrite what does overwrite do let's see if we can see what overwrite does if I drop overwrite in so if you can see overwrite didn't move the clips out of the way it simply dropped them directly over the top of what's already there and any time you drop something over the top of something whatever's underneath it, it disappears basically it's now gone so that clip that was there has now been replaced by the, the wide pan of the, of the trees so if I press undo command Z so that was there and redo shift command Z it's gone again replaced by that so that's the difference between insert and overwrite insert will move your clips out of the way and drop the clip in overwrite will just drop it straight over the top and overwrite what's already there okay so that's in out insert and overwrite so let's go to cutting clips and snapping and linking so I'm gonna undo that for now go back to where we were for a moment sorry so command plus 
and command minus expands my video tracks out and when I expand them to a certain point I get to see a thumbnail of what's going on under there and then plus and minus expands them out horizontally command plus and minus expands them vertically okay um, so cutting and the toolbar this area here is our toolbar you can see there's quite a few tools in here and I'll get to all those tools um, at some point in the next video um, most likely most of them um, but first of all the one I'm going to show you now is called the razor tool and keyboard shortcut C for cut you just remember it that way so if I press C I get my razor tool selected you'll notice that my pointer my mouse pointer hasn't changed until I hover over the clips in the timeline until I until I get into the timeline my mouse pointer stays a pointer but as soon as I get into my timeline I have a razor blade now and I can cut these clips wherever I want them so you can see that when I hover my razor blade near the playhead it sort of jumps into position into it so that's a really useful way to select the exact frame that you want to cut is by moving your playhead into that exact place and then you can go with your razor blade hover over it cut and you'll notice that has cut the video and the audio at the same time now I can zoom in and I can do whatever I want to these now two clips that are separate so I can now take some out move them around do whatever I want so that's what the razor blade does um, so the way that it jumps to my playhead that is called snapping and it does that because I've got this uh, snapping um, because I've got snapping turned on basically so if I, I can turn snapping on or off using that if I turn it off it no longer jumps to the playhead it will just go to whatever frame I happen to be over sometimes that's useful because you don't want it to jump there I want to choose a frame here um, but I can't get near to it because it will automatically jump um, but mostly snapping is very useful because it um, it enables you to be very precise about where you're putting your your cuts so that's snapping um, another useful tool if you're if you're sort of moving your playhead around the timeline and you want it to land exactly on an edit point if you press shift while you're dragging it will snap into position so that's a very very useful tip there um, so linking link selection I can turn that on and off here as well um, I can show you exactly what that does if I go back to my razor uh, sorry to my pointer tool um, keyboard shortcut V you'll see there I'll select that using V so now if I select a clip and select clips just by clicking on them if I select a clip you'll notice that the video is being selected but the audio isn't they're, they're now separate from each other and if I move anything it will only move the audio and not uh, sorry the video and not the audio or vice versa depending on which I move and that is because I've got linked selection uh, turned off so if I turn it back on now my uh, linking comes back on um, and depending on what you're doing at the time either one is useful uh, just depends what you're doing okay so that's, uh, that's cutting snapping and linking so we go to moving clips and deleting 
So if I want to, uh, let's let's start with deleting actually. So if I want to delete this clip from my timeline, remove it from the timeline. Um, obvious, easy thing to do, select it. Um, if I've got link selection on, selecting both the audio and the video and just press backspace. And there you go, moved, deleted. Now I can select these by lassoing them and move them in together. And there you go. And you, because snapping is on, I know those will snap together and I won't lose any frames or, or have a one frame gap or anything like that. That's all fine, um, but that's not the quickest way to do it. And remember, editing is really about getting the most creative job done that you can as quickly as you can. Um, so knowing the keyboard shortcuts and these little tricks um, is really going to sort of get the creativity flowing because you're not wasting time looking for how to do this and how to do that and doing 10 clicks when you could be doing one. Um, so if I undo again, Command Z and Command Z again, put that clip back in. So now if I click Alt first, hold down Alt and press backspace. So if you notice what happened then, Command Z undo, Alt and backspace, let me just move that. It will delete my clip and close the gap at the same time. Okay, so you know it's only a simple thing, but it's it'll save you a couple of seconds every edit. And and we know from what I said before, these seconds all add up. You know, if you're saving a couple of seconds every time you're doing an edit, then um, then you're going to save a lot of time at the end of the day. So that's deleting. So moving clips around. Uh, again, I can just grab these clips. If I want to, let's say I want to put this clip in front of this one. Um, that's quite a few moves because what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to move that one out of the way first. Then I'm going to have to select them both and move them together like that. So now those two clips have been swapped around. So if I just undo that back to where it was, quicker way to do that is select the clip that I want to move. Then I'm pressing Option and Command at the same time, holding them down. And then I'm moving this clip to where I want it. It'll snap into position just there. And then I let go. And you can see that that whole move, that switch has been done in one simple move. Okay. Um, so there you go. Quick little uh, tip there as well. So that's moving clips and deleting. So um, patching and the timeline. Um, let's go back to Premiere. Um, like I said earlier, you notice that when I dropped some of these clips in, um, the audio landed on track two and others, the audio landed on track one. So why is that? Why did that happen? So let's have a look. Um, my, um, if we look at this setup over here, these blue um, track selectors, if you look at where they are, so V1 and V1 are selected, A1 and A1 are selected, and then all the rest of the audio tracks are selected. So this is actually my patching window here. Um, so these tracks, these, um, these uh, buttons here tell me that all of these tracks are armed and selected. Um, and these two here are telling me which tracks are patched in. So at the moment, V1 is patched in and A1 is patched in. I'll explain what that means in a second. So on my phone shot, I've got V1 
and A1 patched in together. Let's open up some of these now. So now on my Sony clips, I have V1 and now A1 has been patched over to A2. So now if uh, the sharp ones amongst you will be able to see how this has happened now. So wh whenever I drop a clip in, wherever these are selected is where they will land. So if I put this on A3 now and drop a clip in, in, out, insert, my audio track has now dropped in on A3. So uh, there's actually a reason why um, why the this audio dropped onto A2 rather than A1. Um, and it's to do with mono and stereo. Um, I'll, I'll talk about that a bit, this a bit more when we do sound, but um, the phone audio is mono, so it's kind of left A1 as a mono track, um, and the um, A2 is now my stereo track. And if we go, if you scroll down to look at our audio tracks, actually, so you can see A1, 2, and 3. I can select these, no problem. For but A4, 5, and 6, I can't select them. I'm clicking, but nothing's happening. And that's because, if you look over here, tiny little layers, 5.1, 5.1, 5.1, 1, that is telling me that tracks 4, 5, and 6 are surround sound tracks. And they can't be, um, you can't mix mono, mono and stereo can mix fine, but mono and stereo can't mix with with surround 5.1 um, so that's why I can't drop my audio into these 5.1 tracks um, I don't know why it sort of defaults to giving you three 5.1 audio tracks um, when they're hardly ever used but that's just the way it goes um, what I will also tell you is that you can patch audio and you can also patch video um, so the way this becomes useful is what if I imagine um, this, so there's no dialogue in any of this, but imagine there's dialogue going through here and perhaps this person in the picture is talking away, chatting away, and she, she suddenly starts talking about uh, hills and fields and all this sort of thing. Maybe we want to drop in a picture of hills and fields and all that sort of thing while she's talking. So what can we do? We, can, we want to drop it in, but we don't want to drop the audio from this clip in over the top of her dialogue. So, but we, we don't mind dropping the video over the top of her video because we don't want to see her. We just want to see the, um, see the trees. So what we need to do is make sure that whatever we do, our audio is, is not patched onto A2 where this is, but patched onto something else. What am I talking about? Sorry, we're not we're losing the audio from this altogether, aren't we? So if I just unselect the audio completely and say we want to drop that clip in there, and now I click overwrite because I want to overwrite this. Um, so let me just show you if I click insert, it's going to push everything out of the way and create a gap. So we'd lose our dialogue at that point. So let me undo that and then click overwrite so now I've dropped in that picture and it hasn't altered the audio underneath um, it's kept the dialogue exactly as it was if there was dialogue there um, that can work the other way around as well uh, I could drop audio in and no picture and I just do just by doing the opposite unselect the video select the audio whatever track i want it to drop in on and boom there it goes there's the audio if if for example i wanted to add some dialogue in but not mess around with the with the picture okay so that's how we add in uh in uh, video and audio by using patching um it does become really useful actually um 
you know, when you're building your first assembly, you'll be just dropping clips in one after the other. Um, and that's all fine, but, you know, films aren't made like that. You know, they're not just made by one clip after another clip after another clip. What you end up having to do um, to give the thing, um, you know, a bit more dynamics and, and, uh, and interest is uh, you'll be overlapping different audio with different video and, you know, your audio will come in before the video and all this kind of thing. Um, so your audio and your video in and out points will hardly ever line up by the time you've finished. Um, and, you know, the, the way you can do a lot of that is by using patching. Um, uh, you know, it helps when you're adding your B-roll, all of your, you know, your nice looking footage after you've edited your um, interview or something like that. Um, you can add all that by patching in the video and not the audio. Um, so yeah, it does become very useful um, towards the end of your projects. Okay. So I think we'll find that we're finished there on part two, editing. So Premiere Video Tutorial part two, editing um, is done for now. Uh, there is a another editing video, slightly more advanced editing, um, and that will be coming up next. Um, and then finally, we will have titles, effects, sound, and finishing. So thanks for watching this one, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.